This is the third lesson on exp applications of exponential functions, and the final for now, until we learn more about logarithms or learn something about logarithms. But in this lesson, I'm going to look at some more applications, like um, exponential decay. And these in, aren't a, are not a big departure over what you have worked with before, but they show you no, a few other common applications, things that you'll see. The thing of it is, we do have to get fairly general at some point and be able to recognize different applications, things that you haven't even seen before. But I am going to cover the main ones, and then the other ones just follow those same patterns. This radioactive decay or exponential decay is based on the idea that radioactive materials do decay exponentially. And if we were to look at um, a very common type of an example, we have a radioactive material, let's say strontium-90, and it loses half of its radioactive mass every 25 years. And we start with a sample of 100 grams of strontium-90. Now the 90, don't be put off by that number, that's just the, the uh, isotope. And that's more of a chemistry or physics issue, we don't use it at all in our calculations. In any event, if we were to analyze this decay pattern strontium-90, set up a little table, time in years and amount in grams, and the initial amount you have is 100 grams, and that's at time is equal to zero. So that's right now. That's your initial amount. And after 25 years, or at 25 years, you will have 50 grams of radioactive material left. Now, I am oversimplifying this a little bit, so if you're taking a physics course that um, deals with this sort of thing, you, you, the language changes a little bit, make it a little bit more realistic instead of just mass. But nevertheless, the, pad, the, the basic idea is the same. And then you go on. After 50 years, the next 25 years, you decrease by a factor of one half again. So now you have 25 grams left. And so it goes. After 75 total years, you can see you've got 12.5 grams. After 100 years, you've got 6.25. And then I'll stop here. After 125 years, you've got 3.125 grams left. So the idea being with this sort of decay pattern is that you tend to keep the material around for a long, long time. And actually, 25 years in the, in the scheme of things is a pretty small, um, what they call half-life. Sometimes they're in the thousands of years. Now, you can work out most of the questions by Armstronging your way through like this, but it is probably easier to use a formula. And to set up a formula, we note that this is an, a decay pattern, an exponential decay pattern, with a base of one-half and a half-life of 25 years. So the base of one-half simply means that that's the rate of decay. The half-life is the time required to decay by a factor of one-half. So it's very similar to the doubling period um, a variable that we looked at in the previous lesson. So the exponential decay formula, as it is usually, but not always written, some books will write it differently, but I'm going to stick with that n at t notation. So n at t, the future amount, is equal to n naught, the original amount, times one half to the t over h. And h is the half-life. And I'm not going to bother defining most of the other ones because we've, they're exactly the same. I do want to show you something else, though, because once in a while, a very common variation of this formula is to go to the t over t one-half. So instead of half-life, h, they'll use t with a subscript of one-half. That shows up more in physics than it does in, in math, however. What is also important about this formula is that it is also based on y equal a times b to the x. So all the applications are variations of this. y is your future amount, so your vertical axis. a is the vertical stretch factor, but really that is the initial amount. b is the rate of growth or the rate of decay. So let me write that in the rate of growth 
or decay for the B. And A represents the initial amount. So if you keep this formula in mind, you can basically um, handle any, op any exponential application that you encounter. So let's start a few. If the half-life of plutonium-232 is 34 minutes, how much remains of a 64-gram sample after 204 minutes? So here's our formula. N at t is equal to n naught times 1 half to the t over h. So the 1 half is built right into the formula. We will get n at t is equal to the original amount, 64 grams, multiplied by 1 half to the total time. And be careful, because the total time is 204 minutes divided by the half-life of 34. And if you're going to push this through your calculator, which most of you will, you'll need a bracket. Now, it is possible, of course, to divide that out first. And uh, in this case, it works out to a real clean number. But you don't know that, of course. So for n at t, I'm getting 1. Simple as that. So 1 gram remains. Pretty routine question. If you identify it as, or recognize it as exponential decay, you pretty much know where to go with it. Let's try another one. Strontium-90 has a half-life of 25 years. We've seen that isotope before. What percent remains after, from a sample after 70 years? And to this is to the nearest one-hundredth of a percent. So I've got the formula brought up again. What's interesting about this question is that no figures are given. We're not told what the size of the original sample is. But that's okay. Because when you're dealing with percents, the easiest way to handle it is to have the initial amount as just 100%. And then that's times one half. The total time is 70 years, and the half life we see is 25 years. And make sure everything's in the same unit, which they are, and then just go right into your calculator. 100 times 0.5 to the exponent of open bracket 70 divided by 25 close bracket. And n at t. is equal to 14.358 and our answer because we started with 100 this is a ratio out of 100 so we can say that 14 point to the nearest 100th is 36 percent remains So not much different than any other application. Now I'm going to look at other applications. We've already done a few with uh, compound interest, looking at population, which is a pretty common one. But you can have other things as well. And sometimes all they want you to do is to find an equation. So a certain coin, coin is worth $250 now, but its value triples every six years. And we want to find an equation for this function in Sketch. So we're not asked to find the value at a specific point. Rather, we just set up the equation and get a, a rough sketch on our calculators for it. Now, I would encourage you to think always in terms of y is equal to a times b to the x, because the three formulas we've looked at are good and very useful, but they're all really the same if you generalize them. And in, in order to handle other examples of exponential functions, you want to be thinking more like y is equal to a times b to the x. And then you'll be okay. Because our value 
is what we want to find. The original amount is 250. And the rate of growth, or the rate of decay, is 3 because it's tripling. So instead of having a 2 there, we have a 3. And the total time, we do not know, but we want a formula that has that built in. But the sort of tripling period, if you like, which goes on the denominator, like it would for the doubling period, will leave us with this. So V is equal to 250 times 3 to the T over 6. So very similar to everything else we have been dealing with. And just to review some of that, those things, A is the initial amount, always, always, always. B is the rate of growth. So that's where we get V is equal to 250 times 3 to the T over 6. And as a, for, as for a graph, you could enter it in basically as it is. And it may look different than what I've got, depending on what your settings are, because you will have to make sure your, your window setting accommodates that high 250 initial amount. And I've got mine looking fairly steep. But this is our graph. So you could use that formula or that graph to determine its value at any point throughout. Let's take a look at another. Maurice has a car that loses 20% of its value every year. We want to find an equation that expresses the car's value, V, as a function of time, T, in years, if the car is currently worth $800. Now you've got to be careful because the biggest problem people have with a problem with a question like this is that this issue of losing 20% and there's a couple ways to approach it sometimes and I'm, I'll show you both um, sometimes it's easier to do some of the work in advance so like if this loses 20% we care about its value and if it loses 20%, it makes sense, I think, that 80% remains. And because our formula is going to be based on value, like what it's worth, not as, a, as opposed to what it's lost, we can set up that formula with V is equal to the original amount of 800 multiplied by the rate of change which is 0.8 because 80 percent remains and you must decimalize all these percents and that's over that's raised to the exponent of t over it takes every year is its kind of its um, um, time period so that would give us then v is equal to 800 times 0 0.8 raised to the t. And that's what I would recommend for that. And then we're done. Now you could plug in any t value you wanted to figure out its value, but we just wanted the formula. Now if it works for you, you can also think in terms of compound interest. Some people use this formula because it's got a percent in it, and typically you can um, use per this formula for any percent type question. But then you want to be thinking that it's kind of like 1 minus i because it's decreasing. So 800 times 1 minus 0.2 to the n, a is equal to 800 times 0 0.8 to the end. Now I don't know why you'd want to do this and then change the variables to V into T, but some people like that. They like to use the compound interest for any percentage problem. And that's it. So those are a few other examples. The next lesson will take a departure from this and start looking at logarithms proper. So we'll begin by doing a little bit of graphing. Thank you for your time.